welcome to City Versus Presents, the Jazz and Poetry Virtual Performance. My name is Evan J. Cutts. I'm a Rutgers University MFA alum and City Versus artist in residence, but tonight, myself, Atorius Augustin de Kunta and the City Versus Jazz Ensemble are your guides on a sonic tour through the hazy and electric art forms that are jazz and poetry. We are gonna time travel all the way back to the Harlem Renaissance and carry you through to the radical present. May poetry and music light our way. Go punk. Your world is as big as you make it. I know, for I used to abide in the narrowest nest in a corner, my wings pressing close to my side. But I sighted the distant horizon where the skyline encircled the sea and throbbed with a burning desire to travel this immensity. I battered the cordons around me and cradled my wings along the breeze, then soared to the uttermost reaches with rapture, with power, with ease. The Harlem Renaissance was an era of boundary-breaking art. Poets and playwrights, musicians and artists, actors and dancers all created evocative and controversial art aiming to define and redefine what it meant to be Black, to be American, to be a woman, to be queer, and so much more. Harlem Renaissance poetry in particular was in a fraught tug of war where some poets, like Georgia Douglas Johnson, eschewed respectability politics in the name of radical self-expression and individuality, while other poets wanted to present a strong cultural front that was respectable in order to elevate Black poetry into the white mainstream. The Want of You by Angelina Weld Grimke. A hint of gold where the moon will be through the flocking clouds just a star or two. Leaves sound soft and wet and hushed, and oh, the crying want of you. As the moon is almost full this evening, we hoped you were moved by the lovely softness of the past. Playwright and poet Angelina Weld Grimke was a predecessor to the Harlem Renaissance, often resisting racial injustice with the power of the page. My name is Atorius Rene Augustine Decunta, and I'm a City Versus Artist in Residence and Rutgers MFA candidate. In these unprecedented times, just being able to share this auditory chamber with you reminds me of better times where we could feel the hum of this wave in the same space. Poet and professor Evie Shockley melodiously offers the currents of ancestral wisdom. As we spring forward, we see both how jazz and poetry explore the human experience through time with common elements of melody and rhythm. Thank you. 
Japan Tomb Landing, 1976, by Evie Shockley. Dreaming the lives of the ancestors, you awake, justly terrified of this world. You can dance underwater and not get wet. You hear, but the pressure is drowning you. You're awake, but just terrified of this world, where all solids are ice underwater boogie. You hear, but the pressure is drowning you. The Igbo, we're walking, not dancing. Where all solids are ice, underwater boogie is good advice, because they're quick to melt. The Igbo, we're straight up walking, not dancing. And you've got to get through this life. Take my advice quickly, they're melting. You could dance underwater and not get wet. And you've got to, to get through this life, still dreaming the lives of the ancestors. When I rise up above the earth and look down upon the things that fetter me, I beat my wings on the air, or tranquil lie, surge after surge of potent strength like incense comes to me. When I rise up above the earth and look down upon the things that fetter me. Georgia Douglas Johnson was born on September 10th, 1880. She graduated from Atlanta University Normal College and studied music at the Oberlin Conservatory and the Cleveland College of Music. Johnson went on to become a renowned playwright, news columnist, and author of four collections of poetry. Her poem, Your World Open Tonight Show, and You Just Heard When I Rise Up, two poems that resist confinement and celebrate freedom with power, with rapture, and with ease. The sky, lazily disdaining to pursue the setting sun, too indolent to hold a lengthened tournament for flashing gold, passively darkens for night's barbecue. A feast of moon and men and barking hounds, an orgy for some genius of the south, with blood-hot eyes and cane lift, scented mouth. Surprise in making folk songs from soul sounds. The sawmill blows its whistle, buzz saws stop, and silence breaks the bud of knoll and hill. Soft settling pollen where plowed lands fulfill their early promise for a bumper crop. Smoke from the pyramidal sawdust pile curls up. Blue ghosts of trees 
tarrying low, where only chips and stumps are left to show the solid proof of former domicile. Meanwhile, the men with vestiges of pomp race memories of king and caravan, high priests an ostrich and a juju man go singing through the footpaths of the swamp. Their voices rise. The pine trees are guitars strumming. Pine needles fall like sheets of rain. Their voices rise. The chorus of the cane is caroling a vesper with the star. O oh, singers, resinous and soft your songs above the sacred whisper of the pine. Give virgin lips to cornfield concubines. Bring dreams of Christ to dusky, cane-lipped throngs. A Winter Twilight by Angelina Weld Grimke. A silence slipping around like death, yet chased by a whisper, a sigh, a breath. One group of trees lean naked and cold, inkling their crests against the sky green cold. One path that knows where the cornflowers were, lonely apart, unyielding one fur. And over it, softly leaning down, one star I loved ere the fields went brown. The next poem I'm going to read is an original piece inspired by the incredible, mythical, alto jazz saxophonist, Charlie Bird Parker. I spent much of the last year studying him, his music, and finding myself inspired both by the mythology around Charlie Parker, but also by his humanity, the intimate and personal details that drove him to make the music he made and live the life that he led. And I was particularly interested in Charlie Parker as a family man and the tragedy that is enveloped in that story. Um, for those who do not know, Charlie Parker did have a daughter by the name of Pre Parker. And due to the rigorous touring schedule that Charlie Parker was a part of, he was not there present for the birth 
and tragically the passing of his daughter. And I wanted to write a poem that explored an alternate reality where perhaps Charlie Parker was able to be there on the fateful day when Pretty Parker was born. I hope you enjoy. One, two, oh, one. Alt real, happy birthday, Pre. For you, my feathers proudly clipped, reattached. My plumage shifts, paternal, atop scalp, humorous, hidden. I am trying to look the part, domestic. Won't you? Make your arms a cage for me, and I won't ever leave. I'll play as straight as square, virtue, mirror, father. Ever since I unpawned myself, returned to the bot, I've been settling down. See, I sing now. My daughter's name, my only song. Salt peanut, salt peanut, salt peanut, salt peanut. To a Dark Girl by Gwendolyn Bennett. I love you for your brownness and the rounded darkness of your breast. I love you for the breaking sadness in your voice and shadows where your wayward eyelids rest. Something of old forgotten queens lurks in the life abandoned of your world. And something of the shackled slave sobs in the rhythm of your tone. Oh, little black girl, born of sorrow sweet, keep all you have of queenliness. Forgetting you once were asleep, and let your full lips laugh at me. Robert wears a monstrous helmet, bowed and shaky as a child, he is way down, like a dead thing sinking, his house a dead weight, wood sink in mud, life be murky water that compresses the minute he pulled out to keep. The dead house is alive, is sinful, outlives Robert, an upright man who is bowed and shaky as the earth is. Heaven is a sink, a red cross waiting for you, the opposite God, the house he blew his breath in to die. Question, 
how long before the water be drawn off. Robert, like most men who wear monstrous helmets, exerts to convince infinity he cares not. He will ever drown in his dreams and is kicked about joyously in the mud. A heart which strains is a sad thing to see. A man straining the raw insides of his throat against the glory pulp strewn in mud, be looking for a monument set where he goes down, a monument of hewn oak, carved open throats. Brother, oh brother, sing deep river when he goes down. My home is a deep river, or home is a want to cross over into gospel that promised peace. Oh Lord, cross over into ground. Before we say goodnight, we are so grateful for your company on this exquisite journey celebrating poetry and jazz, guiding us to contend with our history, an opportunity to grow in the tomorrow we deserve. We'd like to thank NJ Pack partnering with Rutgers University Newark and the Mellon Foundation to bring you City Verses, Jazz and Poetry in the Stacks. Our next event will be November 11th, 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night.